this week in history. Johnny, first up that I got for you today is that the Siege of Vicksburg starts on May 18th and will last all the way through July 4th, 1863. So, All right, so this is a uh, civil war. This is civil war. We need to actually get back to, I think, we maybe maybe next week or whatever, we might get back to a civil war episode or, or, or a military battle war episode because those seem to be our more popular ones. So Whatever you want to do, man. We'll swing back around there. You're but anyways, teaching, You're for, teaching me. For, for this week in history, today we've got the Siege of Vicksburg. All right, so what was the Siege of Vicksburg? So it is the last Confederate stronghold on the Mississippi River in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Uh, it would, by the Union forces taking this, it completes phase two of the Anaconda Plan. Remember the Anaconda Ooh. Plan from way back when? Where right. the goal was to embargo the Confederacies off the coast and then split the Confederacy in two down the Mississippi. So you'd have the western and the eastern portions that would be separated so they couldn't have supplies all that fun stuff. All right. Good plan. By taking Vicksburg, you now have the second phase of the Anaconda plan done. Uh, Grant would would arrive to Vicksburg on May 18th uh, with 77,000 men. And he gets the idea that, hey, look, before the Confederates get all armed up and defended up, why don't we go ahead and try a quick – we'll suck a punch him. Try a quick punch. So on May 19th, yeah. he gives, uh, he gives uh, Sherman, the guy who burns Atlanta eventually – the go ahead to do a frontal assault, and it didn't go well. No, why? No, they were repulsed uh. with heavy casualties. Although I say heavy casualties with asterisks because in Civil War battle terminology, the amount of men that were committed to this assault and the amount of men died are absolutely nothing. I mean, so seventy thousand went right. Yeah, seventy-seven thousand men. So how many? What were the casualties? Uh, it was like one, one or two regiments. The casualties was 157 men killed and 777 wounded. So as of, out of a regiment, that's a lot, but out of an army of 77,000 men, that's nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not much at all. So when that breakthrough didn't work, Grant said, "All right, enjoy being bombed to shit, Vicksburg." And for the next few days, Union forces would bomb the hell out of Vicksburg. Uh, with, uh, you know, the, the whole river was controlled by the Union forces where they had gunboats that were bombing. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it just has ships there with cannons just blasting all day. Blowing the shit out of everybody. Sorry and about the you. Army, 77,000 men were surrounding the city as well on the land, also bombing the shit out of everybody. Uh, Union forces, even though they didn't break through on the 19th, they were emboldened by the prospect of victory. And the ass ton of food they found from the local countryside. Oh, how about that? <laughs> on the 21st of May, uh, while Grant was walking in front of the troops, uh, you know, doing his inspection of the troops, the troops began yelling out hardtack. A chant of hardtack came up, and the soldiers were given a feast of hardtack, beans, and meat and vegetables and fruits that were found. Just sitting the around. Countryside. They're Wait, sitting around. Just waiting for them. Waiting for them, John. It's, it's, like, it's like God planned it for them. They felt, everyone on the Union side, that victory was upon them for the next day. And it's important to note that the Vicksburg campaign that led up to this was astounding Union victory after Union victory after Union victory. I mean, the Confederates were really on the damn run. Yeah, they're just walking through, feeling they're, good. Yeah, they're just they they're started feeling themselves a little bit. So Grant decides on the 21st of May, or 22nd of May, sorry, to go ahead and do another assault with Sherman which results in pretty much the same thing that happened on the 19th. But, wait, it didn't work this time? No, it didn't work this time either. Uh, more casualties, no breakthrough. On this particular day of battle, 502 Union soldiers were killed, 2,500 wounded. This disheartened Union forces a little bit, as it was the first real slowdown that they had during the Vicksburg campaign. Grant wasn't really wanting a long siege, but at this point he said, you know what, screw it. In his memoirs, he wrote that he was determined to outcamp the enemy, as it were, uh, and incur no more losses from his side. And he did this with success. He dug in and bombed the shit out of the city for the next 40 days. 22,000 rounds of artillery were fired from the gunboats alone. 
at the city. 22,000 rounds of artillery fire. Oh, that's just... That just seems wasteful. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe. By July 4th, it worked. The Confederate forces had taken enough, and General Pemberton surrendered his entire Confederate army, which was pretty much the largest army in the West at this point, right, of well, 33,000 men. There you go. There's your your uh, your reward. Yep. But there's a problem here, Johnny. Grant initially asked for unconditional surrender, but when he realized that there were almost 30,000 actual people still alive that were surrendering, what the hell am I going to do with 30,000 prisoners? I mean, really? I don't want to waste the time to transport them to prison camps because, no. dear God, that's going to take months. You've I already waste wasted 22,000 rounds of artillery, <laughs> so you can't just kill them. I don't want to, you know waste the manpower to guard them while we march into prison camps. And then I don't want those prison camps to have to feed 30,000 people. That's a lot of that people. mass time. Yeah. So what he does is he disarms every one of them, takes all their weapons, equipment, and pardons them and sends them on their way. His thought here was that, A, at this point, most of those men were starving. They looked half dead anyways. He thought that they would return home would ransack their home villages for food and supplies and would dishearten the home, you know, people at home because right. look at all, I defeated disarmed soldiers. Yeah. Plus, yeah. You're still coming, them. coming back with their tail tucked between their legs. Yeah. Oh, and sorry. was definitely hard to come by for the Confederates. So losing 30,000 soldiers' equipment was not something to just shrug off. I mean, right, yeah. The, the the problem was, Johnny, in the next major engagement in the fall at Chattanooga, most of these 30,000 men had been remustered in the service. Oh, shucks. Damn it. <laughs> uh, total casualties during this whole uh, siege was North lost 4,865 men, 766 being KIA, seven, uh, 3,793 being wounded, and 200 and some odd being captured. Uh, the Confederates would wind up losing 32,697. 3,200 were killed, wounded, or missing. They didn't distinguish the, between those numbers. And the rest of the 29,495 surrendered. Right. And they lost a camel, Johnny. One camel, dead. And you, I know, I see the face on you. Like, why do How, we have camels? How, why, why, where did they get so, a camel? Camels were brought into the United States prior to the Civil War because they thought it would be a good idea to use camels in the western part of the United States to transport artillery, men, equipment, wagons. Because in the western part of the United States, it's mostly desert. Sure. And then the camels escaped, reproduced, yeah. and made an ass ton more amount of camels. Yeah. And up until like, like 2018 or 2017, wild camels were still found in Arizona. <laughs> so... They're, so that means there probably still are some. There still probably are a few stragglers running around, yep. Uh, they also, more importantly, <laughs> lost all the weapons that they had and 172 cannons, which is huge because during the siege of Chattanooga, the Confederates get one of their only victories in, in the Western campaign at Chickamauga. Yeah. And they surround the Union forces at Chattanooga, but you know what they don't have? An arsenal of artillery piece because 172 of them were lost during Vicksburg. That's a problem, yeah. Yeah, and you know who, who won that siege? The Union soldiers who broke out of the siege because, well, how are you, you going to really keep have a siege if you're not bombarding us? Yeah, like, <laughs> you, you're looking like you're going to give us the siege, but there's nothing coming in, so... Yeah, there's... So we're I'm going to walk broken. that way for a bit. <laughs> All right, Johnny, the last thing I got for us this week is that Hitler declared that Berlin was Judenfrei on May 19th, 1943. Uh, Judenfrei uh, is a term uh, that was used along with Judenrein that means the city is free of Jews or clean of Jews, which means that they were just cleaned in the bathhouses with the showers and nothing bad ever happened to the Jews ever. That's great. They just, just, uh, just did... Uh... I can't. I don't even know. Like, yeah, you how can't to... even go. This is awful. Uh, yeah, it's just... <laughs> I had to throw this in there because we always have to talk about Hitler at some point. <laughs> like... Here we are we're talking about Hitler. What makes me laugh about this, the most absurd and bullshit thing, is first off, it's 1943 in May. Yeah. 
things aren't going exactly the way that Hitler wanted them to go. Wait. Like, it's not May 1942. It's, it's not May 1941. It's springtime for Hitler. Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not that springtime for Hitler. That, it's, no. oh, shit, the Russians kicked our ass at Stalingrad yeah. and are now turning our forces back in Russia. And well, we're not doing so, great in Africa either. Yeah, so as a dictator, he needed a so, victory. So this was his victory. He declaims that yeah. you know he declares that Berlin was free from Jews, which is also funny because what did he, did he like? Did he go door to door and be like, "Yoo Is there any Jews in this house?" Hello, are there Jews? No, no Jews, Jews here. All right, we're Jew free. Hey, like come on, like what the heck? How do you like? I yeah. guarantee you, somewhere in some house in Berlin, there was a Jew in hiding. In I, I mean, there. Guarantee it. Berlin was probably like three percent Jews, at least. <laughs> probably in in hiding. <laughs> Why? What a better hiding place than right under their damn nose in yeah. their capital. Yeah, it's probably the best one. Just uh, took the star off. Now you don't know. Throughout the entire war, Hitler would declare, uh, you know, Judenfrei or Judenrein uh, through multiple locations, including uh, Gelnhausen, Germany. So this is his mission accomplished. Man. This is his mission. This is a mission accomplished. He, yeah. Gelnhausen. Beidgust, which is in Poland, Alsace, which is in you know occupied areas of France, Banat, Luxembourg, Estonia, Croatia, Serbia, Vienna, and Erlangen. They were all at one point free from Jews. Wow. You know it wasn't free from Jews, Johnny? Germany. And do you want to know why? Because they had Dachau, where they were didn't kill them fast enough, I guess. Well, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. Uh, I guess. Well, I guess when you're German, you lose some, you lose some. Yeah, I don't know. And They've not had a lot of victories. No. In a while. No. They, they kept trying, though. They did. I mean, they, they, got, they, they tried. Persistence was there. It's just the whole um, lack of uh, humanity. I you're think. a country the and size then, of the state of Georgia with three million people, and yeah, you're going to try to take on the world? Yeah, I think that maybe Life? they're a little, little too big for their britches. Maybe a scotch. Or they're later hosen. <laughs> <laughs> That's this week in history. <laughs>